class 10 so we were discussing the chapter waste right i have already completed four parts of it i'm going to briefly summarize to you this particular chapter right so waste as i told you this chapter is very very simple because it is divided into five parts how we can tackle the problem of solid waste how we can protect our environment and how we can uh, manage solid waste so that the environment does not get harmed right so uh, there are five topics i have discussed with you landfills as the first approach to uh, waste management Landfilling, as I told you, is putting all the degradable waste inside the uh, pit that is dug and covering it with soil where the waste itself decomposes to form manure, that is sanitary landfill disposal. The second one I have told you, it is incineration, where all the solid uh, non-degradable waste, it is taken to the industry where it is burnt. Incineration means to burn the waste inside the industries in a well-designed furnace. Inside a very well-designed furnace, we burn all the non-degradable waste uh, where gallons and gallons of waste, it can get reduced to ashes. I have already discussed the advantage and disadvantage with you. So I will not go into those details, right? Then I told you about the four R's that is uh, refuse, reuse, recycle and reduce. I have already told you this is something uh, very, very simple, which all of us follow and we understand this. Uh, yesterday when I had a class with you, I send you an audio explanation of composting, right? So let me tell you once again about composting. I have already explained in the audio. Uh, once again, I want to tell you about composting because uh, this is uh, very important for your examination. So when we say composting, now uh, landfilling is to put the degradable waste inside the land. Incineration is to burn the non-degradable waste. This one all of us follow with degradable and non-degradable. When we say composting, it is all the degradable matter is collected. Each and every degradable matter. It can be the domestic waste, your kitchen waste that comes out, the papers that comes out, the vegetable peels that come out from your kitchen. Then when you are weeding your garden, you might have lots of grasses. So you have your kitchen waste, you have your grass clippings, then you have dung of animals, you might have some agricultural waste, you might have fallen leaves and twigs. Everything that degrades with the help of microorganisms, those materials are taken and two things are done. Either in composting, you can practice composting aerobically or you can practice it anaerobically I will, as I was telling you. So, uh, when we say aerobic composting, it means we leave the waste outside. All the degradable waste is collected and it is left in the open air where the oxygen also takes part in the reaction and then the waste decomposes and gradually the end product that is formed is compost which is an excellent source of manure for the gardens or for the agricultural land. And the other thing that we do is anaerobic composting. When we practice aerobic composting because oxygen takes part what happens is uh, there might be foul smell because you have left your waste in the open air there might be foul smell there might be vectors coming and attacking your waste and spreading diseases. So they, though this is something very good yet it has some disadvantage but when we practice anaerobic composting without oxygen and that means you have put your waste either inside the earth or you have put it in a sack and we have covered it so that oxygen does not get a chance to penetrate. So it is only the microorganisms which uh, help in degrading the waste in the absence of oxygen. All the microbes which can act in the absence of oxygen, they act on the waste and then they reduce the waste, the volume of the waste and again the end product in both the cases aerobic and anaerobic 
is compost that can be taken to the agricultural land or for your gardens or anywhere you can use it as a very good source of fertilizer and then i was also telling you about vermi culture or vermi composting which comes under the topic of composting vermi composting is using a special species of earthworm the red wriggler so though all earthworms have the ability to uh, aerate the air and to make the soil uh, very very fertile but when we in farming when we are practicing vermiculture we are trying to use a special species of earthworm that is the red wriggler earthworm they condition the soil they fertilize the soil and the soil becomes very rich in nutrients and ready for cultivation so nowadays we have started rearing red wriggler earthworms in the laboratories and these earthworms are taken and they are released into the field and your work the farmers work is done the earthworms will then uh, make the soil very very fertile and they will condition the soil so especially in uh, countries like india uh, it is a very good method of agriculture very good method of getting rid of your waste from the soil because this is very cheap your duty is only to put the earthworms into the soil so where farmers cannot afford expensive fertilizers vermi composting has come out to be something very very beneficial right so i have already spoken about this yesterday now we are coming to the last topic of this particular chapter that is biotechnology for minimization of waste very very important i have given you six to seven points in your notes also how this particular science biotechnology is helping us to get rid of waste right so there are many things which are not written in your book which i have already provided the notes for right so what you have to understand is biotechnology is a science a field where we talk of beneficial microorganisms beneficial bacteria and fungus are taken and we are trying to uh, use these beneficial microbes in getting rid of waste as you already know we use microorganisms in the food industry we use microorganisms in the uh, in the medicine industry today we are using microorganisms even in the field of waste management right uh, where do we use biotechnology in the in food market a very simple example would be making curd how do we make curd with a bacteria the lactobacillus bacteria that makes curd that is not harmful you eat that it uh, helps us in digestion so they are uh, very useful bacteria and fungus which we are trying to use uh, in the food industry making yogurt and cheese and so many other products in the medical industry we are trying to make antibiotics and so many medicines using the beneficial microorganisms and now today we are talking of waste management using microbes so uh, you must have heard of oil spill in the ocean when petroleum gets uh, leaked it's very very dangerous to the aquatic life but today through biotechnology we have found out certain uh, microbes bacteria and fungus which when released into the water what they, what these microbes do is they eat away the oil they take the oil inside their body so we can get get rid of oil spill that is one waste management technique uh, the second one uh, plastics as we all know they are non degradable but uh, today we have been able to make degradable plastics by using microorganisms australia was the first country which made degradable plastics there is corn starch which is added with the polymers when we are making synthesizing plastics and those plastics when you put them into the soil when you throw them generally plastics do not degrade but when you put this uh, polymer cornstarch polythene inside the soil what happens is because there is cornstarch the microbes start attacking the plastic to eat away the cornstarch and with that what happens is the plastic degrades it breaks down into simpler forms so plastics also are no longer harmful this is the second 
The third thing that we have to learn in this chapter is about bioremediation, right? Bioremediation is an objective question for your examination. So what is bioremediation? If you have polluted soil or you have polluted water, if your water and soil are contaminated with chemicals, then we can use beneficial microorganisms. They are put into the water, contaminated water, or they are put into the contaminated soil. And these microbes help us to remove the contaminants, the toxins that are there inside the water and soil. These microbes remove the toxins. And this process of removing waste from water and soil using microorganisms is called bioremediation. And the last one is biofiltration. Please be very, very careful. Bioremediation is using microbes to remove pollution from water and soil. And when I say biofiltration, it is using microorganisms to remove contamination from air. If your air is contaminated, nowadays we release uh, beneficial microbes into the air and these beneficial microbes, they purify the air. That is called biofiltration. If you are talking of the soil and the water, it is called bioremediation. So biotechnology is a very broad field where we are trying to harness all the beneficial bacteria and fungus and we are trying to utilize them in getting rid of waste from soil, from water, from air and from various other places. So this is your chapter waste which we have completed today. The five points are there. The five points have been covered. So in the next class, I will be starting chapter nine that is environment and development. Thank you class.